Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be discovering what would happen if suddenly all of the mass from the asteroid belt decided to collide with planet Earth. We're going to talk a little bit more about the total mass of the asteroid belt and obviously recreate this in Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What The Math. Now this is not Earth, this is just one of the simulations from Universe Sandbox that has Moon being bombarded by hundreds and hundreds of asteroids. This is something that you would expect to happen to Earth as well? Well, let's see if it actually does happen. We're going to create a new simulation and while I'm doing this I'm also going to briefly talk about what the asteroid belt actually contains. Oh, by the way, if you don't really know much about the location of asteroid belt or what's going on in it, here is a brief summary. Earth is right here, this is Mars, this is Jupiter, and right between Jupiter and Mars there's this relatively large region that we refer to as the asteroid belt. As of today, as of 2018, we've discovered over 700,000 objects there, uh, many of which are in uh, a relatively large size of about 10 to 100 kilometers, and uh, the largest one, Ceres, is also classified as a dwarf planet. This object right here is about a third of the entire mass of the asteroid belt. Now obviously this is not 700,000 objects, I don't think I can place so many without crashing my computer, but we're going to try to place as many as we can. Um, as a matter of fact, if you actually wanted to see some of the more dangerous asteroids that we um, always watch and try to discover if they ever collide with Earth, this is them. There's actually quite a lot of them and the list is always ex uh, being expanded by the astronomical community. Now, we're going to basically uh, do the following. We're going to create a new planet Earth all by itself right here and we're going to place um, enough asteroids here to represent the entire mass of the asteroid belt. So, what do we know about the asteroid belt? Like I said, um, Ceres, which is the largest object, which is right here somewhere, there it is, represents about a third of the mass. So we basically need to place about three times as much. In terms of uh, more comparable objects, it's about 4% mass of the moon. So if you were to take the moon and were to divide it uh, or take about 1 25th part of it, this is this would represent the asteroid belt. But obviously it's not just one big chunk, it's going to be several smaller chunks. We're going to start uh, with creating the asteroid belt itself around planet Earth. And I think I'm going to actually divide this into about 300 parts, uh, because I think my computer can definitely handle 300. Uh, we need to specify the mass here, and the total mass is going to be about 4% of the moon's mass and uh, we're going to basically place all of this as a sphere, a non-moving sphere around planet Earth and well here they are. There is about 300 objects here, each of them has a name moon with a number and each of them is uh, approximately 95 kilometers in radius. Uh, so they basically all together represent the total mass of the asteroid belt and they all look like miniature moons. So let's see what actually happens to planet Earth as we accelerate time here and as they slowly start falling onto the surface of Earth. Now remember these are, each of them at least, about 95 kilometers in radius which is uh, a size of a really really large city or even some smaller countries. Um, the asteroid that killed all the dinosaurs is only about 6 kilometers, which is about 15 times smaller than, uh, than the ones that are going to be falling onto the planet Earth right now. And so here comes the first collision, and as you can see, the explosion from the first collision alone was large enough to most likely decimate all of the life on the planet. But there's going to be 300 of them coming here, and they're all going to add up to the total destruction of the planet. So just watch and observe what happens, and we're going to uh, recreate this again, but this time make an assumption that all of this happens over a period of many, many years, and instead of um, having actual objects land 
or I guess crash with the surface of Earth, we're going to be depositing dust. So microscopic dust or smaller asteroids that basically pretty much every day collide with planet Earth. So as I'm, as I'm recording this, as I'm, as I'm speaking to you right now, as, as, as you're listening to this, uh, several asteroids may have already crashed into planet Earth, but their size was so insignificant that you wouldn't really even see anything. And this is what makes this simulation really important in that I'm going to show you how most of the stuff on the surface of our planet, including the things that we are made of, actually came to planet Earth. So as we are finishing up the simulation and the planet Earth is being destroyed. And here we go. The total temperature here is about 1000 degrees Celsius and the planet is very, very red and glowing. All right, so let's recreate this a little bit differently. So let's assume now that the asteroids falling onto the planet are actually not as dramatic in terms of size, but are basically depositing material over a long period of time in smaller chunks. In the game, I can easily recreate this by doing one simple change. I Instead of adding bodies, I'm now going to just add particles. And these particles are going to represent dust. There's going to be about 3,000 of them. Still not like 700,000 like the actual asteroid belt, uh, but better than what we had before, 10 times more than we had before. This is going to be a sphere and everything is going to be standing still around the planet. So now you see there's going to be 3,000 little particles. They're each about 40 kilometers in, um, in radius, but because they're not represented as the bodies, they're not going to create the same kind of a collision here. And the reason I'm doing this is because over billions of years, our planet Earth received probably just as much mass as there is in the asteroid belt, but it was all deposited really slowly in smaller chunks. It was basically this. It was the asteroid rain in a sense. As these asteroids fell to the surface of our planet, they uh, delivered things like iron and uh, different metals and things like gold, um, but most importantly, things that we are made out of. So for the most part, pretty much everything that's on the surface of the planet was actually delivered here by these asteroids that you just saw colliding with the planet Earth. It didn't really warm up our planet at all because most of them um, delivered this material over long periods of time. So the Earth had enough time to basically balance out its temperatures and to cancel out any effects of the asteroids. But it did increase the total mass. And so the mass here has now actually moved. It's, it's kind of hard to see it here, but it's moved just a little bit by a small value right here. This was, I think, 96. Now it's 97. Um, and a lot of the things on the surface and a lot of the things we use in daily life today, especially things that are actually heavier than silicates, um, are normally or were normally delivered here by asteroids. So we're technically just asteroid dust. And this, of course, includes uh, things like iron in your blood, which almost certainly did not come from the inside of the planet because it's deep inside the planet. The iron on the surface came from the asteroids and from being deposited by those asteroids over time. So everything we find on the surface today is most likely or were, was most likely an asteroid long time ago. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video, and hopefully now you know what would happen to planet Earth if a lot of these asteroids came to the surface of our planet and collided with the planet Earth. So let's finish this video by doing this again. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.